DaVinci Resolve for the iPad has a new update. Now we have version 20.2. In this video, I will show you all of the new features that we got for DaVinci Resolve 20.2 and also a little bonus in the end of the video because I created something complete new for everyone who uses DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. So stay tuned until the end of this video because this is for you. When you come into the App Store and you search for DaVinci Resolve on the iPad, you will always see here what is new. You can click on this one, then it opens the latest update notifications and we see all of the new features that we got with DaVinci Resolve 20.2. Not just that, you can click on what's new and then you see the whole history. And before I show you now everything here in the list, I also want to show you when you come to the website of Blackmagic Design, actually you can always open a guide that shows you all of the features as well. So if you want to look it up for yourself. By the way, on the Apple event when the new iPhone was released, we also saw this device. That one is for the iPhone 17 Pro and the iPhone 70 Pro Max. It's like a rig that you can use and plug in a lot of stuff. So let me see in the future. Maybe I will cover that on the channel as well. But this is an amazing tech that Blackmagic Design also just announced the Camera Pro dock. If anyone of you guys already has that, please let me know your feedback, what you think about that one in the comments or send me an email. Anyway, if you come here to the website and you come to support, under support, you will see always the latest um, support notes and everything. You see here, there is even a video for 20.2, the desktop version, because there's a couple of more features, features that this time only work on the desktop version and not on the iPad. But when we scroll down here, you see here DaVinci Resolve 20.2 new feature guide. You can download this one and then it will open a PDF document with the DaVinci Resolve 20.2 guide. And in this guide, you will see all of the new changes that they introduced now with DaVinci Resolve 20.2. Too. This whole update, even if it looks a lot, there is a couple of features that they introduced or uh, performance stabilizations and stuff like that. There is not too many that they changed. One, the first one, for example, new application menu and preference dialog. The application menu, it's actually very interesting because the application menu is what you have on the desktop when you click on the menu bar that we don't have yet on the iPad. But I guess when we get iPad 20, iPad OS 26, then we will also see these new changes in the application menu. And the preference dialog is also changed because there's a couple of new features that you can choose now in the preference dialog. Then improved support for moving selected keyframes up and down, left and right. What I think what this is, is if you come into any clip and you open the keyframes editor here on the top, if you have any keyframes here, let's select all video parameters. And let's say, for example, I add a keyframe, let's say here to my position. I think what they changed is moving up, down, left, right, that this one is easier than it was before. I cannot really tell that if that is the thing. I was using the arrow keys, but the arrow keys doesn't really work to move them around. So I think this is just, this made it easier to move around. Curve and keyframe editor in timeline now includes action toolbar. This is kind of funny because that is only working in the edit page. So I think, and this is overall also my observation with this update today, there's a lot of features that they announce here that don't really apply to the iPad. I mean, officially, because the edit page, we didn't have officially launched the edit page. But the keyframe editor that you also have here in the edit page, you can open the keyframe editor even here in the timeline. So if you click on this one, you will have now a new window here on the bottom that you can also drag and drop around here on the top. And I can do the same thing, show all video parameters. Okay, so you know, of course you have to select a clip to actually show what you want to see. So I selected now this clip. And what they now change is you have now these kind of icons here as well, like here on the top, that works now here on the bottom as well. So. But unfortunately, on the iPad version, if I, for example, come here to this icon, I can click this, I can change the smoothness, like the ease in and as ease out, but I cannot select this point and drag it around. So that doesn't work on the iPad at the moment in the edit page. But what works is here on the top, I can select this one. And what is also nice, I can make this one here bigger and see more in the edit page and I can move this around and that actually works. So the next one is shift click on lock or show curve to toggle multiple keyframe editor parameters. I think what they're talking about is this one here. When you see all of your parameters, you have a lock, right? If you lock this one, I can lock now this, I can lock the speed variance, but if I hold down shift, if I have a keyboard, I can now actually lock everything 
makes as you see here. So this is included. I guess this wasn't working before. I've never tested that before, to be fair. And then alt click or option click in lock or show curve to exclusively enable a keyframe editor parameters. If I have it like this and I hold down option, and I click on this one. Now, if I click again, everything else will be locked and these ones will not be locked. So this is what you can use with options. It's kind of the same, like if you, let's turn off this one. It's kind of the same like this one here with the lock track in the timeline. If you click it once, you can go through these, right? And lock this one, lock this one, lock this one. But if you want to lock them very fast, you can hold down the shift key and lock everything for the video tracks and the same for the audio tracks. Or if you hold down the option key, you can click on one. If you click again, all the other ones will be locked and that one not. So it's kind of the same behavior that we have in the timeline as well with the locks. Add or edit guides for individual colors, lock states and uh, position types. So with DaVinci Resolve 20, what we got, let's come back here into the cut page. So we got something here. If you click on this one, right click and you activate the guides. I also will now activate the rulers. I can simply by drag and drop from here, add a guide. So that's not new. We had this before, but if I now right click on a guide and I say edit guide, what they now introduced is here. Um, I can lock it. So it stays on the position and also I can change the color. So let's say, for example, I want to lock it on that position in its screen. And the cool thing about these guides is, and I showed that in my other video when I introduced it, if you now use, for example, text, can I actually drag and drop a text in here like this? Yes. So if I have now a text inside here, I can use this text and I can snap to these position, to these guides here inside in DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. Another change that they did for the guides is this one here. Fewer mouse clicks now prioritize fusion, transform and effect overlays over guides. What it simply means is if you have a couple of things that you can select here, instead of selecting the guide, it will actually prefer to first select a fusion or transform or effect overlay instead of the guide. So the next one is kind of funny because we don't have that on the iPad. We don't have the voiceover feature, but the voiceover countdowns now support audible beeps. The next one, option to ripple delete silence for selected clips. That is actually one of the most amazing features of the new update, but it doesn't work on the iPad. I want to show you this now here on the desktop. So if I have a clip and I select a clip, right, that has lots of gaps in it, I can now come up here to clip and then down to audio operations. And then, say, and then say here, ripple delete silence. This opens this new window now. And when you see here, you see now it detects all of these red marks and I can change some of the settings here. But basically if I say remove, it will remove all of the gaps at once. Unfortunately, if I come to DaVinci Resolve on the iPad and I even look for the silence and there is a feature, audio operations, delete silence, uh, ripple delete silence. I gave this a shortcut, but this doesn't work. Not in the edit page and not in the cut page. I don't get this window here. This would be amazing. I don't know why it's not working now. I hope it, they fix this in one of the features in the, like in the updates in the future. This is one of the most amazing features of the new update, but it doesn't work on the iPad right now. So next one, improve multi-text alignment and transform controls. That makes everything easier to align multi-text elements. Resolve FX light effects support glow from an alpha source. Menu action to navigate clips using clip number. So first of all, we don't have a menu yet on the iPad. So this is why this makes no sense. There is an option for a shortcut. I will show you what this does. So the idea is that when you're here in the color page, each clip has a number, right? One, two, three, four, five. And you can use these numbers to go immediately to that clip number. But to make this work now on the iPad, I actually have to come into the shortcuts menu and say, look here for play back and then scroll down. That's one of the menu items that we will get with DaVinci iPad OS 26. And then if you scroll down here, go to and under go to, I can say clip number. This one has no shortcut. I can give this a shortcut. So just for this purpose, I gave it option shift and N. And now if I type in option shift N, this window changes now and I can type in now, let's say, for example, option shift N, I can type in two. Now I'm in clip two. option shift N. I can type in six and I immediately jump to note number six. To be fair, I think this is a feature that we will not really use on the iPad. If you work a lot on the color page and you have a keyboard, then of course you can set this up with a shortcut so that it's very fast to go to different clips. But yeah, I mean, we can also just click on the screen and then we are immediately on that, which takes less time. 
<laughs> then actually type in the number. So the ability to reset node color for multiple selected clips. This is amazing. So now you can select multiple clips and reset all of them at once. Improved AGL viewer output when using viewer display profiles. RCM and C CST now use ITU BT 2.4.8 for LHD and PQ conversion, something with codecs. Support for decoding PSD images. That would be amazing to test this with the iPad. I have not tested this yet. Let me know in the comments if you now can use um, Photoshop files here inside of the Windows of even on the iPad. Support for decoding Apple ProRes RAW because the new iPhone 17 Pros can now record in ProRes RAW. And now the Windows Resolve supports that. I haven't tested this if it also works on the iPad. I hope it works on the iPad. I don't have an iPhone 17 Pro. Let me know if this one works on the iPad. And support for encoding Samsung APV clips. So if you use a Samsung um, with the APV clips, that one should now work as well. Single frame WebP and GIF clips are now imported as stills. So you could now also import WebP, which is nice. A lot of programs can't use WebP if it's still WebP. So that's actually nice in a GIF clip. Press and hold C key to skim playhead on viewers. So to make this one work, you have to first come to the default settings of DaVinci Resolve. If you use custom settings like mine, it doesn't automatically changes your custom profile. So you have to give this a shortcut. But if you use the custom, uh, the default ones, I can now use the C only in the edit page. I guess this what works only in the edit page. So I can now use C here on the edit page and wherever my playhead is and wherever my mouse is, I can jump with my playhead to this one, which is kind of funny because I can just click if my mouse is already there, I mean, you can use this shortcut. This is again, probably not a shortcut that I will use, but I guess some people find this helpful to use a shortcut for that. So there is a shortcut for that. And this is what it does. It only works on the edit page. Support for current date and time text to data burn on and render paths and general performance and stabilizations improvements. Okay, so these were the updates for DaVinci Resolve iPad 20.2. To be fair, this time I had the feeling that they were not really looking into what kind of nodes they put here on the um, on the App Store because many of these features don't really make sense on an iPad or didn't work. But anyway, we got some couple of features and I think like like in the past, if some of the features don't work yet, probably they will work in a, in a couple of updates. At the beginning of the video, I said I created something amazing for you. So for everyone who wants to use DaVinci Resolve on the iPad, I created now a DaVinci Resolve iPad starter kit. And in that starter kit, I give you a couple of cool bonuses. So the first one, it's a seven day challenge course for beginners. So if you're an absolute beginner, I think this is the best way to start with DaVinci Resolve on the iPad because in seven days with seven videos, I just go through the basic steps of recording a video, like create editing a video and everything that is part of that. But the starter kit is not just a course. The main, the core of the starter kit is actually all those different packs that I created. I have a starter kit titles pack, so you can drag and drop simple titles, animated titles in DaVinci Resolve. I also have a fonts pack with over 50 fonts that you can install into DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. So you have more fonts than just the default on your iPad. I also created a LUTs pack for you that is part of that one. I created a cheat sheet. You can also now download my custom keyboard shortcuts that I use to be faster. That is normally only part of my DaVinci Resolve masterclass. I give you this one as well. I give you some cheat sheets and I give you a project template. So just look here through the website, everything that's part of this starter kit. And I think this is an amazing deal for anyone who wants to start with DaVinci Resolve on the iPad, who is a beginner, who wants a couple of tools. So enjoy this massive pack, uh, link in the description, link on the pinned post and have fun with this one. We'll see us in the next video and I hope you could learn something from this video today. I'm Daniel. See you soon. Bye.